Hi, I'd like to say thanks for joining me this evening. Today my topic is how to start the ketogenic diet. The easiest way to start the ketogenic diet and what to expect. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is your body probably is burning a certain type of fuel and the type of fuel that it is already burning is more than likely sugar. In order to do the ketogenic diet, you have to have your body switch from burning sugar to burning fat as its main source of energy. And in order to do this, in order to get your body to switch from burning sugar to burning fat, you have to reduce your carbohydrate intake. That is the key, to reduce your carbohydrate intake so low until your body starts burning ketones. And also, you want to reduce the amount of times that you eat. Every time you eat, you raise a hormone that's known as insulin. Insulin is what decides if your body is going to burn sugar or your body is going to burn fat. Insulin is a hormone in your body that has many, many functions. Insulin controls um, your blood sugars. It controls um, a lot of different things. It has many jobs. When you hear someone say they have many jobs or an organ has many jobs and many functions, insulin has many jobs and many functions that it performs in your body. Also, insulin is the key um, to getting nutrients to your cell. And if your insulin is not functioning right or not functioning correctly, it can cut off the nutrients to your cells and this can be very debilitating to you as an individual. This will cause you to have what is known as diabetes. In order for your body to burn fat, you have to keep your insulin levels low. If your insulin levels go high, then your body will switch back over to burning sugar. This is just how it works. So the key thing that you have to remember when doing the ketogenic diet is that you have to lower your carbs and you have to eat less meals in order to be successful on this diet. Those are the main two goals that you want to focus on. What you need to keep in mind is that every time you eat, you raise your insulin. And that is what you don't want to do. You want to keep your insulin levels low and you want to keep them even on an even keel. And in order to do this, you need to eat less meals. And when you're eating these meals, you need to eat less carbs. You want to make sure you're keeping your carb intake low. Okay? Once you understand that, then you will be successful at what you are trying to to accomplish when you're doing the ketogenic diet. Remember, low carbs and eating less meals daily. I don't care what it is. Whatever you eat and whenever you eat, you are going to raise your insulin. Remember that. You may try to uh, sneak food or you may try to eat something that you think is not going to affect you but what you have to remember is you're not fooling anyone but yourself your body knows your body knows what you're putting into it it knows the difference between a carbohydrate a fat a protein so if you're going to do the diet do it correctly so how are you going to do this? How are you going to start the ketogenic diet? Okay, the first thing is you're going to have to cut your carbohydrates really, really low. And when I say cut your carbohydrates really, really low, I'm talking about all of the sweets, the sugar, things like um, the cakes, the cookies, the pies. All of those things have to be cut out of your diet. Um, you're going to have to stop eating uh, honey, agave. You're going to have to stop eating syrups, different things like that. You're going to have to learn to replace um, the sugars or the sweet things with sugar alcohols. These are what you will learn about and what you will be using. Now, there are 
different types of sugar alcohols and different things you can use, erythritol, um, and then there are natural sweeteners, stevia, there's monk fruit, but there are some really good sugar alcohols and natural sweeteners that you can use that will not spike your insulin. And these are the sweeteners that you're going to learn about, you're going to use them, and then according to your taste, you will pick out the sweetener that best suits you. What's going to become very, very important to you when you're starting the ketogenic diet is learning to read labels. That's going to be very important when you're shopping um, for different foods. Um, you're going to have to learn to read the labels to make sure you're not getting sugars, hidden sugars that are in the foods that you're eating and in the foods that you're buying. You're going to have to learn uh, different names of these hidden sugars and that are in the foods that you're buying because they just won't come out and say sugar. Sometimes it will say cane sugar, coconut sugar, different things like that. But you're going to have to learn the other different names like maltodextrin, dextrose, uh, sucrose, uh, sucralose. You will be able to um, pick out um, hidden sugars that are in foods. And if so, then those are the foods that you don't want to buy. You're going to have to learn to read labels, and it's not that difficult or that hard. The main things that you want to look at when you are buying foods on the labels, you want to look at your fats, your carbs, your proteins, and your sugars. And you want to learn how to look for where your, what the sugar alcohol uh, content is and different other things as far as reading your labels. But these are things that you will learn through time and you'll get better at it as you go along. It's really not that hard. Now there are some things that you eat that turn into sugar, so you're going to have to learn to avoid those things. And one of the main things that you eat that turns into sugar are fruits. Um, there are only certain fruits that you can eat on the ketogenic diet, and that's mostly berries. Um, I eat, um, you can have raspberries, you can have strawberries, you have blackberries, um, some blueberries. Blueberries are a little bit higher on the glycemic index, so you want to make sure that you eat those in moderation, but really you want to eat all of the berries in moderation. But like I named those first three, raspberries, um, blackberries, and strawberries are really the best berries for you to eat on the ketogenic diet. And like I said, you don't want to eat those, um, overeat those, because um, those uh, can also do you, do you in also if you eat too many berries. Now, I say that if you want to eat berries, keep it to a half a cup to one cup of berries a day, and that should keep you fairly well safe on your ketogenic diet. Um, normally when I'm having a hard time losing weight or I'm stuck on a plateau, berries are usually one of the first foods that I do take out of my diet in order to get my scale moving again. So be sure and keep that in mind if you're doing the ketogenic diet. Now some other things that you want to avoid on the ketogenic diet is you want to avoid things like um, white sugar, brown sugar, white flour, wheat flour. Things like that you want to avoid on the ketogenic diet. Um, make sure, like I said, that you're reading the labels. Now, you will be losing a lot of uh, almond flour on the ketogenic diet. That's something that you can substitute. And also, people use coconut flour a lot um, when they are doing the ketogenic diet. So, these are flours that you're going to get used to using. Um, I had to get used to using them, the nut flours and different things like that. But they do make excellent dishes. You can use these flours to make um, your breads. You can use them to make pasta. Um, but you can have these type of foods. You just have to learn to cook them differently. Also, something else you want to watch as you're doing the ketogenic diet. You want to make sure that you don't eat too much dairy. Um, some people dairy agrees with them and some people it does not so you're going to have to find out how dairy you know acts with your body and then use it sparingly because sometimes um, eating a lot of dairy um, 
causes a lot of mucus and a lot of people are bothered by that. So just keep those little things in mind um, as you're adapting and changing your diet over. Now also during the ketogenic diet, you've been used to eating things like um, mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese, all of those different type of dishes. You can still have dishes that are similar to these on the ketogenic diet and what you'll be using to make these will be cauliflower and you can make a combination of cauliflower and broccoli and different things to replace these dishes that you um, are used to eating. Now the cauliflower mashed potatoes uh, I call them the cauliflower mash which I use to replace mashed potatoes can be made to taste very very good you can make them loaded where you've got your cheese and different things on there but you can make these dishes taste very very good um, cauliflower uh, mac cheese I call it but this replaces macaroni and cheese but you can learn to make these dishes you can learn to make these dishes where you can hardly tell the difference in what you're eating. Now when I say you can hardly tell the difference, know that you can tell the difference because you know what you're eating. But as far as a replacement, um, your palate will adjust and you will learn to love these foods as well. Now I have used cauliflower to make pizza, to make my crust, and it was very very good. I have used cauliflower just to make so many many dishes. So just know that cauliflower is going to be a, a, a become one of your main staples. You might as well say I use cauliflower to make um, rice. I make cauliflower rice and that is really one of my favorite dishes um, on the ketogenic diet. So you're going to learn how to like I say use different foods and uh, foods that are low calorie and keto friendly and this is what your goal is on the ketogenic diet to replace starchy foods and foods that are too high in fats and not the right type of fat you want to be able to replace these with good nutritious fats and good nutritious foods which you will learn as you go along on this diet now if you don't eat a lot of vegetables bad news for you you're going to have to start eating a lot of vegetables on the ketogenic diet as a matter of fact your carbohydrates most of these are going to come from vegetables and when I say vegetables I mean things like uh, leafy green vegetables cruciferous vegetables um, we want broccoli cauliflower kale spinach chard um, all of these really, really good nutritious vegetables you can eat on the ketogenic diet. And there's a list that you can get of ketogenic uh, vegetables and foods and the list is long. It's not like you're so limited in the foods that you're eating. That's one of the good things about the ketogenic diet. You don't have to worry about starving on this diet because you can eat until you're satiated. And that just doesn't mean go overboard and eat, but you can eat until you're satiated. And once you get started on this diet, you'll learn that some of the things that you want to aim uh, to eat is you want to aim to eat your protein goal. When you're first starting, I say aim to eat toward your fat goal because you want your body to adjust over to burning fats instead of burning uh, sugar. And to do this, when I first started, I did, um, I just started eating more fats in my diet. I didn't choose to go the way like the water fast or anything. I just added more fats in and ate according to my macros and my body adjusted and I started to lose weight. When I first started on the ketogenic diet, I had something like 150, 170 pounds to lose in order just to get to a decent weight. And I did not think that there was any way that a person like me would be able to do this. I read stories about others doing it and I studied them to see different things that they did and how successful they were. And what I found out 
When you first start, you're going to fail. You're going to fail many times along the way. The trick to winning is to get back up and keep going. Don't give up. Don't give up. If that's a goal that you want, you want to get to a healthier weight, you want to start living a healthier life, you can do it. You can do whatever you put your mind to. You can do it. When you're doing keto, you're going to be eating a lot of vegetables. They say that you should eat at least seven cups of vegetables daily during the keto diet. Now, if you're eating a combination of cruciferous and the leafy green vegetables, you can actually get away with eating four to five cups of vegetables a day. But you do want to get enough potassium in your diet, which you should have 4,700, I believe it's milligrams of um, uh, potassium daily. So you see, you do have to aim to eat enough vegetables because you want to make sure that you're healthy and that you're maintaining your health as you're doing this diet. You want to do healthy keto. And doing healthy keto, that means you have about 70% worth of healthy fats um, that you'll be eating or aiming towards. And then you want to have 20% worth of protein and 10% worth of carbohydrates. Those are the macros that you want to aim for when you're first starting the ketogenic diet. As you progress on the diet, your macros are going to change. And after you've calculated your macros, then aim for those new goals and focus on those goals in order to get healthier. I um, have to tweak my diet ever so often. I have to look at if I'm on a plateau, if my weight loss is, is too slow, just whatever's going on, and then I can tweak my diet where I can have better results, or if I'm having some different issues, then I can um, help my body deal with those issues by the foods that I'm eating, and you can also do the same thing. Anyhow, I hope that I have given you a little bit of information that helps you as far as starting the ketogenic diet, um, what you can expect um, that's going to happen with your body. So I want to talk a little bit about protein and the amount of protein that you're going to eat on the ketogenic diet. For your meals, you're going to have, I would say, two or three meals that you will be eating on the ketogenic diet. Some people even have to drop their meals down to one meal a day in order to see some success or to get their diet going in the right direction or at the speed that they want to lose weight. Um, so there it will be based upon how many meals you're eating, one meal, two meals, or three meals a day. And then you want to make sure that you're eating an adequate amount of protein, a moderate amount of protein. For um, a meal, anywhere from three ounces of uh, three to four ounces of meat per meal, which is about the size of the palm of your hand or the size of a fist, that is going to be about three to four ounces of meat or a serving. That is what I usually um, measure mine by. I try to have different little tricks that help me with portion control because portion control is going to be very, very important as you're doing the ketogenic diet also. Um, if you're eating just two meals a day, then you want to have, I'd say, three to four ounces per um, meal of protein. So that way you make sure you're getting enough protein. And protein is very, very important. If you don't have enough protein, then you're going to have muscle loss. And you don't want to lose your muscles. You want to make sure that you maintain your muscles and that you build muscle. Also, while you're doing the keto diet, uh, calorie. I would say when you first start off, don't worry about your calorie intake because it's probably going to be a little bit higher. When I first started, it seems like I ate more calories than I was used to, but I still lost weight. And then eventually, as I kept doing the diet, I noticed that my fat intake became less. Even though I was aiming toward that fat intake daily, my fat intake became less. And I... 
I, I wasn't even getting enough protein because I started having some hair loss, trouble with um, my nails growing, being soft and breaking very easily. So I had done research and I found out that I needed to have more protein. So like I say, make sure that you're getting enough protein as you're doing the ketogenic diet because you don't want to have those issues such as hair loss, hair thinning and different things like that. So aim to eat your protein, reach your protein goal daily and if you can, get a little bit of extra protein. But you don't want to go over your protein um, uh, uh, amount too much because protein does turn into sugar. So remember that also. So the next question that you may have is how do I get my protein? What type of things do I eat to get protein? Well, a lot of your protein is going to come from the meats that you eat. Um, you can get um, protein from meats. You can get it from seafood. You can get it from eggs. You can get it from nuts. Um, there are different ways that you can get your protein. And you can even get protein from plants. You have to eat a lot more but you can get protein from plants also. So find the different ways that you can get your proteins in and then make sure that the foods that you're eating are keto friendly and you really shouldn't have any problem um, reaching your keto macros. So while we're talking about proteins, I want to add in here, when you're eating your proteins, you're going to be getting a lot of your fats with that because some of the meats that you'll be eating, it's going to have a lot of fats in it. Once you learn how to read the labels, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. But a lot of your proteins are going to come with your fats already. So that's going to be something that's really, really good. You won't have to be eating all these extra fats in order to reach your fat goal. And the um, by eating the fats, that's going to help your insulin. That's going to help your insulin stay level um, and it's going to help it to not raise. So that's why fat is important in your diet and also fat is going to help you um, feel satiated. It's going to help you feel fuller longer between meals. And something important about when you're eating fats. When you're eating fats you want to make sure that you're eating good nutritious fats. You can add like olive oil to your salads. This is very, very good. Um, if you want to add um, avocado oil and cook with a little bit of avocado oil, that's very good. A little bit of butter, a little bit of lard. But something I would say is don't slather on a whole lot of fats because you want your body, once you get adjusted on the ketogenic diet, you want your body to start eating your fats. And that's when you're going to start um, eating less fats, uh, cooking with less fats, but you still want to have some, but you want your body to use your fat. So this is what you are going to aim toward to getting keto adapted so that your body starts eating its own fat in order for you to reach your healthiest state. You want to make sure that you avoid um, fats that are not good for you, such as vegetable oils, soy oils, canola oils, corn oil. You want to avoid all of these fats, especially when you're cooking. You don't want to add any of these into your diet. If you have these in your diet now, you want to take these type of fats and oils out. They're very inflammatory and they are not good for you. Now, something else that's important when you're starting keto is you want to work in intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is going to help you um, get inflammation out of your body. It's going to help you regenerate uh, new cells, which you're going to need in order to do the ketogenic diet. Um, you want to get rid of the old trashy... Um, stuff that's in your body. You want your body to clean it out. So you want to incorporate intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is where you won't be eating as many meals a day as you're eating now. Right now you're probably eating six to seven times a day because I'm including snacking at least two to three times a day and at least three meals a day. 
that's usually what people usually do. Um, you want to change your eating pattern and you're going to have to do this with intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is where you eat um, for a certain window during a certain window and then where you fast during a certain window. So your eating window say will be you will have your meals between 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock in the evening. This is when you will have your first meal say around 12 o'clock and then you may not have your second meal until around 5 o'clock. But in between you will have no snacking or anything like that. You will just have your meal and after you have your meal, make sure that you eat enough during that meal so that you feel full and you feel satiated where you don't have to snack. That's why you want to eat a certain amount of fats because fat is more denser and it will make you feel fuller between your meals. And then when you have your next meal at 5 o'clock, um, have what you're going to have for that meal. Um, you can make it lighter or however you want to eat like you want to. But don't overdo it. Remember, you're still doing keto. Um, what I would do is have a certain amount of calories that I want to stick around or, you know, what that's going to be. And, and stick to that. And you're going to see some really good results. Again, you want to start doing keto. You want to take out the foods that you should not be eating. And then you want to incorporate in intermittent fasting. To have your best results. So I hope I've given you a little bit of information that can help you um, with getting started on keto. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below so that I can answer your questions. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and that way you won't miss any videos that I make or that I share. And also, like and share with others so that we can get the message out that we can get healthy ourselves just by the foods that we eat. And it's a lot easier um, than we think it is. I wish I knew all of this information um, way back when. I'm now like in my 60s, but I wish I knew this information way back when I was younger and understood. So that's why I'm spreading this information around so that others can know, hey, we can get healthy. If we learn to eat a certain way, we can get healthy and live a good quality life. This is Keto Granny saying have a great evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.